Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. This is going to be part 10 of the Abomination of Desolation series. Our main chapter is going to be the book of Daniel, chapter 12. In part 9, we did Daniel chapter 11, but now we're going to read Daniel chapter 12. So if you haven't uh, read Daniel 11 or listened to the previous study, I suggest you do so before you do this one because they're, I mean, they're tied in together. So, all right, Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. At that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. Now, it doesn't mean he's sitting down on the job. No. But it, when it says he's going to stand up, think about this. Have you ever heard of somebody says, yeah, he stood up to that bully. So that's, that's kind of, that's how I see it anyways. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. There is a lot of prophecy here. I, I don't even know where hardly to start, but let's start at Michael. The, uh, all right, let's take a look. Michael is, from what I understand, is one of the Lord's prince or princes of the angels. Let's take a look at Daniel chapter 10 real fast. All right, so who is Daniel? I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Michael. Well, let's take a look at chap Daniel chapter 10. Oh, let's see. I guess we'll start in the beginning. Daniel 10. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel. Now, this is toward the end of Daniel's life. I guess Babylon has been destroyed, and Persia, which is modern-day Iran, uh, conquered Babylon. So, you had Darius and you had Cyrus. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the fourth and twentieth day of the first month, I was by the side of the great river, which is Hittichel. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. His body was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning. and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. Yet heard I the voice 
of his words. And when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. And behold, an hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hand. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand, and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. Now we're not talking about a human here. We're talking about an angelic being. At least that's what I believe. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. So evidently, now remember people, there, we're, and we're going to read it in a bit. In Revelation 12, the Bible talks about there was a war in heaven. So evidently, this angel was sent by the Lord to go to Daniel. But he was in a battle with the what's called the prince of the kingdom of Persia. This is not some human that stopped this angel. No. This The prince of the kingdom of Persia is some kind of probably a high-ranking angelic being. So, lo, it says, But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. So, Michael had to come down and help this guy in his battle to go see Daniel. Now, this is just my opinion. Personally, uh, we're going to read Daniel chapter 12. But the thing is, the fallen angels still confront and attack the servants of the Lord. And, you know, I'm sure all the Lord has to do is say a word and Satan and his angels would be gone. But my opinion is we... We have to have, we humans have to have an adversary. And why do I say that? Well, you know, let me tell you something. If when you became a, a believer and the Lord gave you a hot looking spouse, great health, cured you from all your diseases, a, a condo, well, not a condo, but a mansion on the beach, a Rolls Royce, and seven million several million dollars, and a hot spouse. Did I mention that? Uh, I mean, who wouldn't want to become a Christian? I mean, let's face it. Everybody would want to be a Christian. Even the most evil people in the world would become, want to become a Christian, right? But we suffer in this life, in this world, because we look forward to what's to come in the next. We're going to suffer persecution. That's why the Lord allows this to happen. He's actually, in a way, testing us. I mean, I'm sure he knows how we're going to be. Personally, I'm of the opinion we existed in some sort of form before we were even born. But... Uh, you know, the thing is, when we're cast into hell, or if we're ca uh, allowed entry into the kingdom, it's going to be because 
basically we passed the test. Uh, and it isn't anything that we can do. Everything depends on what Christ did. Okay, and a matter of fact, some of your, uh, the Bible says that our works are going to be judged and we're going to be rewarded by our works. And if you're truly saved, you'll make it in the kingdom, but your position in the kingdom is going to be judged by what you did. And those that show that they had no faith, you know, they gave lip service you know, they talked the talked, but they didn't walk the walk. There's a difference. But that's why I think uh, the Lord allows Satan and his demons to try and tempt us. Uh, we need an adversary. And, you know, those that are going to be cast in the hell, they're going to know why they're going to be cast in the hell. I mean, God isn't some cruel, evil bastard, and that's a Bible word, by the way, that just creates people to throw them into hell. No. If, he, if you go to hell, you're going to know full well why you went. The Lord gave you an opportunity to escape, and you rejected it. And you did evil things. I never repented and never turned from your evil. So, but that's why we have an adversary. All right, so Daniel 10, verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days? That's the last days, people. What shall befall thy people in the latter days? For yet the vision is for many days. And when he had spoken such words unto me, I set my face toward the ground, and I became dumb. And behold, one like the similitude of the sons of men touched my lips, then I opened my mouth and spake, and said unto him that stood before me, O my Lord, by the vision my sorrows are turned upon me, and I have retained no strength. For how can the servant of this my Lord talk with this my Lord? For as for me, straightway there remain no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. Then came, uh, then there came again and touched me one like the appearance of man, and he strengthened me and said, O man greatly beloved, fear not, peace be unto thee, be strong, yea, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Then said he, Knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee, and now will I f return to fight with the prince of Persia, and when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grisha shall come. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth, and there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael your prince. All right, where else is Michael mentioned? Jude chapter 1 verse 9. Yet Michael, the archangel, he's an archangel. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. You see, people, Michael is an arch, arch, archangel. So, let's take a look at, well, let's see. All right, let's go to Je uh, Revelation chapter 12. We could do an entire study on just Michael. 
wouldn't probably be that long. He's only mentioned a few times, but he gives you enough information that you can figure it out. Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. Now, I did an entire study on this, so I'm just going to kind of breeze through it. Uh, if you're interested, take a look at my playlist. You'll find it. Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And if you don't know what this is, go to Joseph's, uh, Joseph and his dream in uh, his father Isaac interprets uh, Daniel had a dream about the woman with the sun, the moon, and uh, the stars. Verse 2. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. A great red dragon. Uh, isn't it interesting? Communism always has a red flag. Aren't communists called reds? Yeah, I know. They want you to think that communism is dead. No, it's not. Now they just call themselves socialists or progressives uh, or Democrats and Republicans, too. But uh, red, the color of communism. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Contrast this with Job chapter 38. If you don't know what the stars of heaven are. Same thing as the sons of God in Genesis chapter 6. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Now, obviously, these are not burning stars because if they were, the earth would burn up. No. Remember, Satan is called an angel of light. Isn't he? Oh, yeah. He's called an angel of light. All right, so the great red dragon, his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Didn't that happen in uh, Bethlehem when Herod sent the soldiers and killed every child, male child under, what was it, two or three years old, something like that? Verse five. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Now, if you don't know this is talking about Christ, you got a problem. Verse 6, And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score years. This is the tribulation period, people. About 42 months, about three and a half years. Here's the punchline, verse 7. And there was war, was, 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 past tense. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels. Michael, the archangel, has angels. So evidently, he is some kind of like a general or something. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. I've had people tell me the devil and Satan are two different beings. No, they're not. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Okay. 
Let's go back. Daniel chapter 12. All right, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 30. You know, there's a lot of prophecy of the end times in the Old Testament. People, have, you know, people that call themselves, oh, I'm a New Testament Christian. That Old Testament, that's for the Jews. Uh, we don't read that because we're not Jews. Well, you know what? The Jews don't read it either. They read uh, another book, you know. What can I tell you? But uh, there's more prophecy in the Old Testament on the latter days or the last days than there is in the New Testament. So, and if you don't have a foundation in the New Old Testament, the New Testament draws a lot of its symbolism from the Old Testament. So, if you got no background in the Old Testament, a lot of the things in the New Testament don't make any sense. Jeremiah 30, verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah. See, two different kingdoms, Israel and Judah, saith the Lord. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Now, I'm not sure exactly when Jeremiah wrote this, but I have a feeling it, this was written either in the captivity when Babylon took um uh, took uh, Judah captive, or possibly even before, before uh, Babylon came. I'm not sure. I believe this was during the captivity. But, uh, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with a child. Ah, you know, travailing with a child, that means suffering in childbirth. Uh, yeah, they uh, these transgender people want you to think uh, that there's not you know, male and female. Oh no, there's more. There's more than two genders. Really? Does a man, the Bible even asks, does a man doth travail with a child? You know, when a man can get pregnant, uh, they can talk to me about it. But uh, until, until then, I don't think so. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Listen to this. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. People, Christ was of the line of David. So when they're talking about David their king, whom I will raise up unto them, they're talking about Christ, okay? Verse 10, Therefore fear not, uh, I'm sorry, Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob. Uh, Jacob's name was changed to Israel, remember that. O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. 
Though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee. See, God scattered Israel. Though I will make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered, scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure. Oh yeah, you're going to get a spanking. That's the Bob translation. But I will correct thee in measure and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. For thus saith the Lord, Thy bruise is incurable and thy wound is grievous, there is none to please, uh, I'm sorry, there is none to plead thy cause. Think about uh, when you go to court, you want a, an attorney or an advocate, uh, a barrister if you're in the UK, to plead your cause before the jury and the judge. But here, there is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up Thou hast no healing medicines. In other words, they're sick and they have no cure because Christ hasn't come yet. Didn't Christ says he came to heal? Oh yeah. In Luke chapter 4 and verse 18, Jesus read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are bruised. Contrast that with Isaiah chapter 61. Same, same. Virtually the same language, people. All right, Jeremiah 30, 13. For there is none to please thy cause, because thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. All thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. I have done these things unto thee. You know what, people? You wonder why we have floods and drought and earthquakes. Think about it, people. Whirlwinds, tornadoes, hurricanes. Oh, they're going to say, oh, it's global warming or it's harp. No. It's the Lord. I have done these things unto thee. Therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity, and they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. And, I, and we're talking about a predator and a prey, not not praying to God on your hands and knees, no. Predators prey on their victims. 17. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents, and have mercy on his dwelling places, and the city shall be builded upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof, and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. Their children also shall be as aforetime, and their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all that oppress them. And their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governor shall proceed from the midst of them, and I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach 
unto me, for who is this that engaged his heart to approach, approach unto me, saith the Lord? And ye shall be my people, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. That is some beautiful words. Beautiful words. And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with fury. Tornadoes, tornadoes and uh, cyclones and uh, hurricanes, people, right? <laughs> Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with fury, a continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain, pain upon the head of the wicked. The fierce anger, the fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he have done it and until he have performed the intents of his heart in the latter days. In the latter days, ye shall consider it. You know what, people? Hurricane Katrina hit um, New Orleans just before they were supposed to have a uh, pride event if you catch my drift with their little rainbow flag well guess what never it didn't happen as planned <laughs> behold the whirlwind of the lord goeth forth with fury a continuing whirlwind it shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked the fierce anger of the lord shall not return until he hath done it and until he hath performed the intents of his heart in the latter days ye shall consider it. All right, um, I was going to do Daniel chapter 12, but I've already done a half hour, so. All right, well, I guess this is going to be part 10. I guess in part 11, we'll do Daniel chapter 12, because I don't want to make this an hour study, so. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.